Hey guys, how are you doing? A very common question that I get is around Golang frameworks. And the question is, which are the most popular Golang frameworks? A lot of people coming from Node.js and Ruby on Rails background obviously want to understand the popular Golang framework so that they can use it and leverage it to build things quickly with Golang. And I completely understand that. So in this video, I'm going to take you through five very popular Golang frameworks that you can get started with very easily and start building stuff immediately. So let's do that. So I'd like to start with GoKit, a very popular microservices framework with Golang. And a lot of people coming from Java Spring Boot background or Node.js molecular background who need something equivalent in Golang to build microservices very quickly without writing a lot of code. Um, it's perfect for them. So GoKit enables you to do exactly that as in build microservices quickly without writing a lot of code. It does a lot of abstraction for you, does a lot of code generation for you. You can use gRPC along with it. And there are many other uh, microservices frameworks like uh, Gizmo and GoMicro, GoTalk, Kite, GoCircuit, uh, but they're not as popular as GoKit and GoKit is the most widely used, at least from what I know, it's very, very widely used. And uh, a lot of companies that I know are using it. And it's very easy to build with, very easy to maintain, very easy to extend. And these are the things that I look for when I pick up uh, when I pick a framework. So I'm not just giving you the framework that are there on the internet. I'm giving you frameworks that are, um, you know, being used by a lot of companies, com like trusted companies that I know. And uh, they're easy to maintain, easy to test, easy to extend. So this is why I would recommend using GoKit. And it's a great microservices framework. You can read more about it. Documentation is crystal clear. You'll get a lot of uh, online resources and YouTube videos around GoKit. So it's definitely a great framework to use. The second one that I know is quite widely used by a lot of people. And you can tell that by the number of stars it has. It has 28, almost 28,000 stars. And it's been there since quite some time now. So Bego is quite popular and um, it's almost like a MVC framework and you can do a lot of, uh, you can very easily build enterprise grade applications in Golang with Bego, right? That's what they say. And uh, I can uh, testify that, that you can easily build really good secure uh, projects with Bego. So Bego is basically an MVC kind of framework. It's open source, it's high performance web framework. I don't use it a lot. Uh, I'll tell you the ones that I use more. Uh, I use GoKit obviously, but Bigo I've uh, I've not used a lot uh, to be honest with you. But since it's very popular and since I know a lot of companies using it, it's extendable, it's easily testable, it's very easily maintainable and uh, the community is quite strong. So that's why I recommend using Bigo. I don't personally like it a lot. Um, Echo, again, Echo is extremely popular. Uh, it's very minimalistic. It's high performance framework. And uh, again, you know, I don't, I don't really um, use it a lot. It's very fast, uh, and people are very, very happy with it. As you can see, it also is quite popular, right? It has over twenty-two thousand stars. The ones that I use, uh, and you can see that in uh, my playlist site, right? So if you're new to GoLang or if you're new to this channel, I have more than hundreds of videos on GoLang. I have, um, you know, uh, more than 30 different projects that I've, I've built with GoLang. So you can go check them out. You can build along with me. And in the, in the first few projects, uh, you know, for the beginners, uh, I have used Mux quite a bit because Mux is very easy, very simple to use, very simple to understand. And this is what the beginners start with. So I, whenever, uh, you know, I recommend any beginners to watch anything I, or, or use anything with Golang, Mux is usually the, uh, uh, you know, fr framework that I uh, say that you should use. And then uh, the most popular one, but uh, I think uh, even more popular than Fiber. So Fiber is quite popular. You must have heard about it. You have seen a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is full of Fiber videos. We'll talk about Fiber in a minute. Um, but the most popular one that I know of is Jin, and I use Jin quite a bit. So if you want to learn Jin, I have some uh, series like the Restaurant Management series or the JW Authentication. Uh, these are two big playlists on my channel. You can watch, and I've used Jin uh, extensively in uh, in those uh, playlists. And I'm building a new e-commerce uh, playlist series. Uh, I have used Jin uh, in that as well. So Jin is uh, very simple, very easy to use, and it does a lot of work for you. So you don't have to uh, work a lot with the responses and requests. It does a lot of everything for you. And uh, it basically helps you with, uh, with a lot of context, uh, like, you know, it helps you pass context and uh, you can easily access the request and response bodies. Um, and it's very popular. It's, um, it's extremely performant. You can see the, uh, you know, tests. Uh, it's being used by a lot of people, like 3.3 thousand projects use it. Um, and it's going to be there forever. So a lot of people use it, 
community is really strong a lot of companies are using it um, easy very easy to maintain and uh, you'll find a lot of resources for it so obviously i recommend gin and uh, then comes fiber so fiber is growing very quickly and i um, obviously want to talk about fiber because uh, anybody coming from a node.js background right so i also am a node.js developer and i use express quite a bit so uh, anybody who uses express will find it extremely simple to transition to fiber right so people coming from other languages i would recommend them to go for mux uh, you know if, if you're coming from a java background i would recommend you to go for mux if you're coming from let's say uh, a rust background a ruby on rails background or python background i would say gin is the way to go for you for you to be able to understand very easily uh, but if you're coming from specifically from a node.js express background fiber is the right framework for you to go with and this is why it's getting very popular right now that's why a lot of people are, are using it it's growing very fast in popularity because a lot of node.js developers are shifting to golang as you already know and when they're shifting to golang they want something equivalent so that they're able to understand it really easily so it says i mean uh, they're they blatantly saying it on their main uh, Go, uh, github uh, repository that it's an express inspired framework right so a lot of the syntax even though uh, the language is different a lot of syntax the way of, of using it yeah, even keywords like uh, how you define app as the main uh, you know variable with uh, express that's how you write with uh, fiber as well and i've created a lot of videos on fiber so there are two videos uh, one is the uh, crm project the one is the hrms project both of them i've done with fiber go check them out uh, through complete projects you will build with fiber you will really like it it's very simple to use code is very very minimalistic very you don't have to write a lot of code actually actually so just like you would do in uh, express app dot listen or uh, you know as app basically express dot new you can just create fiber dot new so it's very very similar to express basically and a lot of people like it it's very simple to use very fast and they say it's extreme like extremely fast as in way way faster than um, you know express i'm not sure how much percentage this is like 75 percent faster than express i'm not sure you can check it out but it's i all i know is it's very very fast and i use go fiber quite a bit i use gym quite a bit i use go fiber quite a bit and when i'm working with microservices i use go kit and for new developers i recommend learning mux so these are the frameworks that i use bigo uh, enterprises and big big companies use it uh, i don't like it a lot it's uh, quite kind of bulky I'll tell you why I don't like it actually. So uh, back when I was a Ruby on Rails developer, I used to work a lot with Sinatra, right? So Sinatra is uh, the a lighter framework than Ruby on Rails and you can build a lot of things with it. But the problem with Ruby on Rails and Sinatra is that it has so much abstraction that uh, it feels like magic and you don't really know what's going on under the surface. And I used to have a lot of problem uh, with that. Similarly, Flask uh, is a Python framework and it does a lot of things for you. It builds a lot of things for you. It does a lot of scaffolding, both of these, right? Sinatra and Flask, they do a lot of scaffolding for you. And this is why it can be problematic because then you don't understand what's going on under the surface. So these kind of frameworks can get slightly tricky because they have a lot of things going on and you don't necessarily know what's going on under the surface. So I don't really like it a lot. I like Mux, Gin, and Fiverr because you get a lot more control with it and you know what's actually going on inside. So uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. And if you're, like I said, if you're new to Golang, this is the right channel for you. Subscribe, uh, build the projects with me watch all the basic videos that I've created and and you know thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video